you're going to see a different James Wade and uh, I'd love to sort of see him back in the Premier League and the World Series. I'd always want to try and create a legacy when, I, you know, when I'm finished and done in this game. I want to try and you know, be one of the top three, four, five biggest major winners. It's, it's a good thing that I've come around in the last 12 months doing this because I think darts needed it. Luke, congratulations. A year on, you sit here a World Match Play finest. How satisfying does that feel? It, it, you know, it is very satisfying. I, th I remember being here, you know, a, a year ago, and I remember walking out, and uh, you know, not, dev not you know, not, not inconsolable, but devastated because I felt like it was the time that maybe it was. I was finally going to pick up that first major title, and you know, Johnny's finishing really was was brilliant, and it stopped me. But I've achieved so much in the last twelve months. So you know, eight. I think it's eight major finals in ten now for me since that moment. I can't ask for too much more to be honest. We're in such a great era of, of fantastic dart players that to do that it, it's something special. So all eyes on trying to, you know, be that, that next person to go and win the worlds and the match play in the same year. You touched on what you're doing in the finals that, that you're getting to. Do you feel that you're creating your own history within the sport? Because there's not many players that have done what you're doing right now. Yeah, I think there's only ever really probably been Phil and Michael that's ever really done something so incredible in a, in a short period of time so you know for me to, to go on and, and you know match the achievements of two of the the greatest dart, the two greatest dart players in the world there's no argument about that it's uh, very special for me but if I can go on and, and win tomorrow then uh, you know I definitely would be up there in one of the best 12 months any dart players ever had to be honest I'd be you know alongside them too so all eyes on trying to do that tomorrow and your game itself that was tight for a while but when you needed it you found extra gears and you've done that so often so what is it about your game that allows you to do that I, d I think it's just experience. I think I've played so much darts on the stage in the last 12 months since that semi-final that it's helped me to be able to adapt my performances and, and play long, long spirited games. You know, obviously the world final, the world semi final, world quarter finals last year, or should I say this year in the end. Um, they're long, they're long games, and it's sometimes you go in and out of form. One minute you could be playing really great, the next you you kind of going off a little bit. But you never, you know, you're never going to be playing over set. You know, tw what was it, 27 leg? You're never going to be at your A game the whole time. If you are, then you're going to put in a fantastic performance. But it just never really happens. So I, I kind of understand more nowadays that these long, long, long format games, you're going to be in and out. But there's a lot of things going on out there. <laughs> All I can hear is like, yeah. Game shot. I think Kirk's. Does anybody know what the score is? Sorry. We'll find out. In a okay. Um, stop playing too well, Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, um, it, it. You know, I've learned a lot from all the experiences I've had. So um, hopefully, I can, uh, you know, take that into tomorrow as well. Congratulations. Thank you. James played very well and was playing you on at points in that match. That one five six seemed like a bit of a, a tight turner. James played fantastic, you know, fantastic performance from himself. It felt like sitting, standing behind him every time. It was a triple twenty. I felt like he outscored me. I really do. I felt like he did, and probably the stats would tell you he did. To be honest, so yeah, he he, he did outscore me. But I kind of flattering that it was seventeen ten. But maybe my my crucial finishes at the right time and the crucial set of shots was the difference. Um, but you know, you can't take nothing away from him, James. He, that was one of the best performances I've seen from him in a long time. So. You know, you can obviously tell that over the next sort of five months, is you're going to see a different James Wade, and uh, I'd love to sort of see him back in the Premier League and the World Series because the sport needs needs people like James to be honest. Where do you see tomorrow in, in the, the biggest games you've played in your career? Uh, I, it would be second, you know. Obviously, after the World Championships, if this would be second, and the Premier League would be third because, in my eyes, this is the second biggest tournament on the calendar. So, yeah, this is the second biggest game I've ever played in. But if you've played in the World Final, there's nothing that can be worse than that. And obviously, when I played in the World Final, I was, you know, absolutely brilliant. 103 and a half average over 11 sets is it's not easy to do. So, I know I can do it in the long format and, and in the biggest games in World Darts. And it would round off an incredible 12 months. Obviously, it started with the World Grand Prix that in 10 months ago now. What a year that would be! It would. It would round off the, the one of the greatest years of, of my life, but not just mine, but any dark player's career. To be honest, I think five major tournament wins with a world final over the worlds and uh, and the World Cup win. You know, there's not many people that's done that. To be honest, let's be honest. Uh, I put myself up in history, but like I always said, I always want to try and create a legacy. When I, you know, when I'm finished and done in this game, I want to try and 
you know, be one of the top three, four, five biggest major winners in in the in the sport. But you know, these sort of big wins will will will, will, will help me with that. Thank you. Luke, one of the expressions that seems to be used so much in your games is Luke's turn on the afterburners. Mm. And like you alluded to just earlier there, that seems to be a feature of you knowing knowing the right time to make that run. But that comes down to mental strength, that timing. And one thing that's been that's been a thread through your career is your mental strength has gained all the way along. Mm. Do you feel like now you're in that such a good place to deal with all these different moments? Yeah, I think the experiences over the last 10 months have just helped me you know they've made me a stronger person mentally and physically and I just know how to deal with these long long format games you just, I think when you when you're up there you just know you're not going to be at your best for the whole period of the game you're going to have peaks and troughs you just have to accept that when you're in them troughs try to limit the damage you know I think in the first 10 days against James I was I think it was five all but I was nowhere near my best and I could have been 7-3, 2 down and James was playing fantastic and I wasn't, I was 5 all. So for me I thought he can't sustain this level for the whole whole duration of the game. He kind of did to be honest but I was thinking in my mind he can't but he did and uh, you know but in my mind I'm thinking he can't and I'm thinking just just stick in there and then when I come back from the, the, the third break at 8-7 I was just deadly to be honest. I felt that was the moment to change the game and if I didn't I think James would have run away with it and won himself so it was an important moment. Luke, you've spoken about how good this year has been and how it could get even better. Do you find it difficult to sort of keep that motivation and keep that hunger when you have been so successful? Because we've seen different players before. Michael Smith has admitted that when he, in his words, completed darts, he became a little bit lazy. Have you found that at all? No, I, I, I've not completed darts though. You know, there's many, many major titles for me to complete off the tip list yet. Obviously, being world number one world champion is the two, the two that you always dream of doing, and you kind of say, yeah, I've completed, but I haven't. I need a world match play. I need the UK Open. I need um, the European Championships. I need the World Series finals. There's so, I need a World Series title, which I ain't got yet. So there's so many things that I need to, to complete, and if I do that in the next five years. Then I'll think, right, well, let's do it again. You know, that you never completed darts. It, the only way you can complete it is when you, you, you retire and you can look back at your career and think, did I achieve all I wanted to? Did I achieve what everyone expected me to do? If I retired now, they could say I did, but I'm not going to retire now. I've got hopefully another 20 years. And, uh, you know, the only thing I can think of is an exciting thought that I could win many, many major titles. But you have to win them as early as you can because you never know what's around the corner, to be honest. You know, you never know who's going to be there to, to, to stop you from. You know, winning everything, but I think you know, for me, it's it's a good thing that I've come around in the last 12 months doing this because I think darts needed it. You know, someone to, to push the Michael Fingers again, prices the Smiths, just someone needed someone to, to push the sport, and now all the other players are going to want to you know stop me. And from what we've heard, it sounds like it's going to be a difficult game, whether it's Michael Smith or Michael Van mm. Gerwen. If it was to be Michael Van Gerwen, you've beaten him the last seven times in a row. Do you think that's going to be on on his mind, or even on his mind now, thinking? If, if I get through this, I've got Luke Congress who I just can't beat at the moment. I don't think it will be, to be honest. I think, you know, if you're playing a, f playing a massive game like this in the World Match Play Final, he will probably look at it as, I've won this three times, I haven't uh, I haven't won this. So he'll think, I've got the experience. But it doesn't matter, matter to me who how many times he's won it. You know, to be honest, I think it won't change anything for me. I'll still go up in that game feeling very confident. Um, but it's only going to help my confidence more than it will, Michael, you know, to know that I beat him the last seven times. It's... Uh, you know, and a, a great achievement for someone so fantastic at, at this game. But I don't think it will matter for anything tomorrow. You know, we'll both walk up onto that stage, and it won't be remembered. He won't. He won't think about that when he walks up there, and I won't think about it either. Cheers, Luke. Thank you. Thank you very much. Luke, very well played today. Obviously, Thanks. there was a moment in the game where you had your last start going at double tops to break the James Wade throw. Would you have said that that moment in the game was as important as the say the one five six at the end of the game? Yeah, it probably was important because you know if that didn't go in, then James hits it, and then. You think he would have been eight seven or what? I don't can't remember, but he would have been in front, and then he he was just playing so well. I just couldn't let him get in the lead because if he would have, I think he could have run away with it. To be honest, a bit like I did, but you know it was a massive shot. But there was a couple, a couple of massive shots. I think the double two when I was messing around on the doubles was a good shot. The one five six, you know that timing of the ten eleven dart. You know, there was so many moments in the game where I just restricted him from being able to get in front of me, and that was that was the key to, to winning that game. And you mentioned after the Dimitri Vandenberg game, obviously you had your family here to support. 
support you plus the win? Does it feel extra special that they were there to support and witness you win? Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, my family are just over there right now. You know, it's lovely to have them here and, uh, you know, they don't affect my performances. I mean, my dad's going to be coming. He's, he's never missed me win a major and he won't want to miss, you know, tomorrow if I go and win. So my brother's coming and everyone's coming up tomorrow. So it's a long journey from Newbury. They're all going to be here and, that you know, if, if I win, then uh, they won't want to miss it. If I lose, then uh, they're there to pick me up. But, um, yeah, it's really good to have them, obviously, to school was the, the reason why they couldn't be here through the week. But uh, now they're here and uh, one more game and uh, we go again. Thank you very much. Congrats again, Luke. Thank uh, you. Van Gogh in earlier this week mentioned that you and him have been uh, rolling back the years and playing a bit of Call of Duty mm. um, to get yourselves to sleep. Uh, yeah. If it is, if it is uh, Van Gogh and who makes the final tomorrow, do you think you'll have time tonight? <laughs> I won't be. No, 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 not tonight. I think uh, I don't know what the time is now, but I think it's probably going to be too late. To be honest, for us. Yeah, I, I think well, the way that game's going, it can go all the way. So uh, probably no Call of Duty tomorrow. But he is good fun. He's really good fun to play with and. You know, we're in the same management group, so we, you know, we, we enjoy ourselves and you know, bit of bit of Call of Duty in the night times after he's finished his games and I finished my games. But uh, you know, now it's uh, it's a it's a quick turnaround. So tomorrow, tonight's going to be loads of rest and uh, uh, no no stress. But Call of Duty is stressful, I can assure you. It's really stressful. So no stress now, and uh, you know, wake up tomorrow and uh, wait for the next, wait for the the final. The, the landscape of darts seems completely different to a lot of other one-to-one -one sports. Obviously, we have a great relationship with both Michaels, obviously, um, with Smith also with the England team. Does that almost make it a bit more difficult when you're going into a major final against what you consider as a good friend? Not really, because I'm I, I consider James Wade that as well, to be honest. But it didn't really affect me tonight, you know. Kind of thing. I'm good friends with a lot of players. <laughs> so I kind of see that, so it's kind of hard. If I, if it, that was the way, it kind of be hard every game I played. To be honest, but. Uh, now, when I'm up on the stage, I don't look at the player as that friend that I look at them off the stage. You know, I'm there to to win. They're there to win. You know, there's 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 no sort of animosity in the game, but I just I just want to win. So um, you know, I don't find it hard to play your friends to be honest. But um, you know, hoping that you know it's going to be a good game tomorrow, regardless of who it is. Thank you.